concept of quick. You can bimble around the tower in your own time if you like. You can get an audio guide from there. That'll be fine. But if you don't want the audio guide and you'd like to listen to this, keep up! Right. How big's the problem? How many Americans do we have here? Mm. Come on, hands in the air. Oh, there we go. Say hello to the Americans. Oh. Hello there. Just think if you paid your taxes, eh? Oh. All this history would still be yours, wouldn't it? <laughs> Didn't think about that when you got uppity about the price of tea in Boston, did you? No. Any Canadians from Canada? Now, this is your history. Still part of the empire, eh? Or a commonwealth, we call it that. Okay. Empire got a bad name after Star Wars, which uh, <laughs> had nothing to do with us. <laughs> Any Australians here? Woo! Good day! <laughs> Unless you're from the outback, of course. Good day! <laughs> Australia, not a lot of people know this, is the largest island in the New Zealand group. <laughs> <laughs> Kiwis having a giggle at the back there. <laughs> Any Europeans here? Oh, some nervous hands for this. <laughs> Where are you from? Manchester. Manchester. <laughs> I have a room for you. <laughs> Anyone here from France? No? no Good. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you come from, it really doesn't. Especially Manchester. <laughs> I was born there myself, Moss Side. Great Western Street. Do you know it? Play it your drive through without stopping. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you come from. They say an Englishman's home is his castle. This one's mine. I live here. Alone as it turns out. 45 years old. Single. Great sense of humour. Live in a castle. In London. With parking. I'm on Facebook. <laughs> Most of my colleagues are married. They live here with their families. Some say they're happy. They live along this street, a lot of them. This is called Mint Street. This recalls another use of the Tower of London. Up until the year 1810, all the coins of the realm, the empire, and indeed the colonies, were designed and produced in these buildings, which are known as casemates. This I know because it's written on the wall there. <laughs> the two-storey casemate you see here was home to the master of the mint. Isn't that interesting? Mm. No, it's not. That's boring, dull detail. The reason that I mention it is that in 1699, an incredibly famous man was appointed as the master of the mint and he lived there. You will know his name. He was Sir Isaac Newton. Yeah. You, did it. you knew that. <laughs> now, Sir Isaac Newton, of course, is famous for inventing gravity. <laughs> British invention which keeps us all on the planet and binds the universe together. It makes astronomy simple. Um, makes life simple. Before that it was terrible. People were floating off everywhere. <laughs> now, um, Mint Street looks fairly quaint uh, as a residential area, but you should be aware it is in fact a killing ground. Let us not forget that this is medieval defensive architecture. As an attacking army, you'd have lost dozens, maybe hundreds of men, struggling through that festering bog of a moat, wrestling with the polar bears, <laughs> trying to climb the walls. Now, all this time, people are trying to kill you from the ramparts. If you'd managed to get this far, you then come up against another wall. This wall is the inner Balium or defensive wall. 13 defensive towers with a 50-foot curtain Archers on the ramparts and in these towers would be cutting you down with murderous volleys of arrows. Not a healthy place to be. The oldest and strongest of the 13 on the inner wall is this one, the bell tower. The walls on the lower chamber are 10 feet thick. And because of their strong structures, these towers were often used as prison accommodation. This one, most notably for Sir Thomas More. He was the Lord Chancellor of England and a great personal friend of the King Henry VIII. It was his job to tell the king when he was acting against the public interest. It was known as the king's conscience, the Lord Chancellor's office. Now, when Henry VIII declared that he was going to be the head of the church in England, Thomas More said, no, sir. <laughs> Seriously, that is too much power in one man. That way leads to tyranny. 
And not to prove the point or anything, Henry VIII imprisoned him for saying it. <laughs> now, in July 1535, the court of King Henry VIII produced a document. It's called the Oath of Supremacy. By that time, Thomas More had been a prisoner here for 15 months. He'd seen his good friend John Fisher, the Bishop of Rochester, held in the upper chamber, taken out onto Tower Hill and beheaded for his refusal to sign that document. They thought that this would crack Thomas. It didn't. When he was asked to sign it, he refused. Technically, that made him a traitor. He was beheaded on Tower Hill with one stroke of the axe. Thousands gathered to hear his last words. These were simple yet profound. I die the king's true servant, he said. I shall always be God's servant first. Amen. And uh, 400 years later, in 1935, Sir Thomas More was made a saint in the Catholic Church. We're in his footsteps today. Another prisoner of the bell tower is that fellow James Scott, the Duke of Monmouth, whose grisly execution you made me describe right at the beginning. There is a bizarre epilogue to his botched beheading. A yeoman warder was sent to retrieve the head from London Bridge. It was rushed back into the fortress and immediately sewn back onto the body mm. by the tower surgeon. Sadly, he was too late. <laughs> there was then a delay of nearly two days before James Scott was finally buried. Academics and art historians argue the significance of this. Some suggest this action took place to allow James Scott to have his portrait painted. <laughs> Now the portrait hangs in the National Portrait Gallery and you can see their point. It's just by Trafalgar Square, take a look. <laughs> You'll notice he wears a very large collar. <laughs> it's unusual for a mounted soldier. And the face does have a peculiar detached expression. Oh. <laughs> now the gallery staff insist, I tell you, there is no hard evidence to suggest it was painted post-mortem. But you should go there and judge for yourselves. <laughs> now speaking of beheadings, let's be heading off. Oh. Along Water Lane to Traitor's Gate and the Bloody Tower, where we're going to cheer ourselves up. Come on! <laughs>